This episode of Boss Fight is brought to you by Vex the Cat. Hey, furries are sponsors too. comes from. Without Sparkle, life is dull, boring, and depressing. Well, this sounds like a lovely place. Uh, why am I here? Because it's time, Princess Sparkle Muffin. Your life of isolation and captivity has been draining your sparkle. It's time for you to become who you were meant to be. Hooray! Um, who is that? Do you remember your nursemaid? Nanny Netherwax? I'm supposed to be here? No, you're supposed to remember what she told you. Um, well, she used to tell me stories uh, using some words my parents said I should never say in public. Yes, and what were those stories about? Those were the words my parents told me never to repeat in public. We look our own privates. You can tell us. Ooh, okay. Well, they were stories about staying true to yourself, even if no one understood. Even if they thought you weren't as good as you should be. Or too good. Or not as evil as you should be. Or too evil. Oh, and she gave me this ring. The Sparkle Gem! You make that sound very important, but I don't get it. The Sparkle Gem is a direct connection to the Sparkle. It's probably what brought you here. I thought I was just really buzzed. <gasps> is that why I didn't go splat when I fell out the window too? Yes, Sparkle Gems protect their wielder from harm, but they also attract the forces of evil who covet their power. Wait, is that why I always get captured? Probably. probably. <gasps> You mean, I'm not just a damsel in distress? <gasps> she begins to understand. Well, this is a good way to start the show, a shot of my ass. Excuse me, R.O.B. Welcome to episode two of Boss Fight. I'm Leanna Kersner, and with me is R.O.B. from Classic Nintendo, and the artificial consciousness who always brings their own disco, Glowy Box. <laughs> Boss Fight is a show devoted to busting myths and bringing you the truth about video games and the people who love them. This episode, we're looking at the myth that the gamer identity is inherently white, straight, cisgender, and male, and games are nothing but male power fantasy. The gaming community is, accordingly, a monolith. The gamer identity is inherently male. You hear that a lot, but anyone who tells you this is lying. The gamer identity is inherently male. And here we go. I repeat, the gamer identity is inherently male. Sing kumbaya and hug as long as the hand sanitizer lasts, but the genesis of computer games wasn't Adam and Eve, it was Steve and Steve. Oh, you thought it was Pong. <laughs> Fornicate Pong. Steve Jobs knew Pong was inferior, so he created Breakout for Atari, which was exactly like Pong, only better. And by created, I mean that he got his friend Steve Wozniak to do most of the work while Jobs kept most of the bonus. That, gentlemen and precious few ladies, is innovation. Of course, Breakout on the Atari wasn't nearly innovative enough. Steve Jobs needed a computer specifically designed to play Breakout, so he acted on Woz's excellent idea to do just that and had Woz create the Apple I, then the Apple II, because great thinkers never create the ideal product the first time. Just ask Bethesda. The Apple II became the first great gaming computer, and it was created by two nerdy men to impress their more nerdy but less brilliant men friends, because being a gamer is an inherently nerdy man thing. 
even when it's a woman doing it. Of course, these nerdy men were also white. Yes, the Japanese have figured out consoles, and the Chinese are buying parts of pretty much every gaming company in existence, but America still isn't communist enough for that to really matter. The gamer identity is still devoted to freedom wrapped in liberty. Except when someone decides to support Hong Kong, that's just bad for business. Yes, African Americans play video games. Asian Americans play video games. And other less American Americans play video games. But when people think America, they think this. Dead presidents, people, and until someone puts Barack Obama's face on money, those dead presidents are all white, male, cisgendered, and decent enough to keep any secret Uranus tendencies out of the public eye. Because no one cares, so no one has to see it, so we can continue not to care. Folks. Everyone aspires to be the faces on money. And the faces on real money, American money, are white, publicly straight, cisgendered men. I know this isn't politically correct, but get woke, go broke, people. Business doesn't care about your feelings. No matter what color, gender, or deviant sexual freak you are, you can embrace white male privilege through video games. So, Eclectic Widgets is disrupting the culture war with a hybrid first-person shooter, third-person action game that shows breasts are just misplaced testicles. Angel Protocol. But first, we're going to run a bunch of commercials for the people paying for this presentation. Whoop like a bunch of trained simians and put on a good show. That's what you're here for. Well, this looks slightly more promising than Mind Control Spores, but... Nice still hasn't really thought this one out. Well, it's true that lots of white men play video games. That's not the same as saying the gamer identity is inherently white, straight, cisgender, or anything other than a person who is a video game enthusiast. Saying that any identity based on something you do is connected to something you are is, as the people who usually complain about this stuff say, problematic. Let me give you some examples. Doctor. Traditionally male role, but not inherently male role. Firefighter, same thing. Now let's flip it around. Nurse, kindergarten teacher, secretary. None of these jobs is inherently connected to a gender, but the gendered associations make it harder for people who don't fit the traditional assumptions. Now, some roles are inherently male. Father, uncle, brother, just like mother, aunt, and sister are female. Parent, relative, and sibling are gender neutral terms. No one remotely sane complains about these inherently gendered roles. The reasonable complaints start when identities like doctor, CEO, president, athlete, and soldier are seen as things only men or white people or any other specific kind of person can do. Just because these roles were traditionally held by men, in some cases, white men, that doesn't mean they're inherently male. Stereotypes only have power if they're given power, and they're only given power if people believe them. Because the gamer identity is assumed to be male, games about heroism are often confused for male power fantasy. And they're not the same thing. Oh, show's starting again. I'm Anne Reardon, Chief Common Sense Officer at Eclectic Widget Games, and this is your first look at Angel Protocol. And by look, I mean this single image, because all you consumers voted with your dollars and bought Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem with next to no pre-launch footage available. You clearly know best. You play as Chuck, the leader of the most elite squad of hand-to-hand -hand commandos ever trained, the Silk Angels. Not only are they proficient in all types of weapons and tactical training, but they are also astonishingly beautiful women, genetically engineered to attain physical and aesthetic perfection. As Chuck, 
take control of your angels and guide them through gameplay, ranging from espionage to full-out assault against your political targets. Then use the resources and payment you receive from successful missions to invest in research to create sturdier, flashier, and skimpier armored bikinis. Your genetically modified team needs lots of sunlight to survive. So make sure you design combat armor that meets their needs. Spend quality time in between missions with your angels by the pool. Engage them in a spirited game of volleyball or help them apply their tanning lotion. VR gear required. Join the struggle for democracy online and play as the Angels or any of their female rival teams such as the Misfits or the Larsenic Aces and fight for dominance. Now stay tuned through yet another sponsor break for more details including the female playable characters you can thoroughly oculate within the game. Is it wrong that I might actually play this game? I mean, it's Gears of War meets Dead or Alive Volleyball. Obviously, I'm not the target demographic, though, because this game clearly buys into the idea that the bulk of gamers are white, straight dudes. But the question we're looking at here isn't whether AAA gamers are predominantly um, chucks, but whether the gamer identity is inherently white, straight, cisgender, and male. My God, that's tiring to say. That needs an acronym. These games are gems when you are WSCM. These games are gems when you are WSCM. These games are made for you, no matter what you do, because you're a white heterosis dude. Well, that just happened. But why does any of this matter? Well, if the gamer identity is inherently W-S-C-M, then it doesn't matter if people who don't fit that description feel welcome. They're never gonna feel welcome because they don't fit the inherent requirements. Now, one could argue that you shouldn't have to be a gamer to play games, but come on, all pastimes are designed primarily for fans of that pastime. The assumptions about people who identify as gamers don't match the data about people who identify as gamers. While 71% of white youth in North America play video games, 83% of black youth play video games. Black and Hispanic youth are also more likely than whites to have a positive opinion of video games, and they're less likely to think of them as a waste of time. Blacks and Hispanics are also notably more likely to identify as a gamer than whites. So much for the gamer identity being inherently white. Now, okay, in raw numbers, more white people play games in America than other types of people because, well, non-Hispanic whites significantly outnumber other racial demographics in the U.S. But when you realize that China is always neck and neck with the U.S. based on revenues from game sales, and the next two biggest markets are Japan and South Korea, the idea that the gamer identity is inherently that of a white man just falls apart. And the idea that the gamer identity is inherently straight and cisgender might be even more ridiculous. Granted, gay people and trans people are a minority of the overall population, but they seem to be overrepresented in video game communities. And there's reason for this. Video games allow players to do things in game that they'd be shamed or punished for in real life, including performing as the gender they feel more comfortable in and romancing characters of any gender they want. It isn't just that gay and trans people play more games, though. A lot of gay and trans people write about games, review games, and make games. Games like Cyberpunk 2077 have body type options instead of gender selection features, and the Saints Row franchise has untethered a character's voice type from their body type for some time now. You can even change your performed gender partway through a play by visiting a plastic surgeon. Now, with all of this said, the trickiest part of the gamer identity is gender regarding cisgender women. You don't hear black gamer or trans gamer or gay gamer nearly as much as you hear girl gamer or gamer girl. The proliferation of girl gamer suggests that there's something inherently male about the gamer identity because otherwise, why make that distinction? But the problem there isn't the gamer identity. It's with the term girl gamer, which is why I hate that term. 
Like I hate The Sims. I hate The Sims. Now we can track exactly where the idea that video games are for boys comes from. And that's why I have this guy. The Nintendo Entertainment System was marketed as a toy in the mid-1980s after the crash of the Atari console era made computer game systems unpopular with retailers. Toys are heavily gendered, and because the NES came bundled with ROB here, the original Nintendo got sorted into boys toys. But we have evidence that during the arcade and Atari era, this wasn't so. Games like Pac-Man and Centipede were designed to appeal to women, and the box art for the Atari 2600, complete with black, Asian, and female players, indicates that video games were not designed for just white macho men. One could even joke that these two gents are a gay couple. Joking aside, women and people of color were intended to be included from the beginning. Saving the damsel in distress only became a common trope because it was an easy story to tell without a lot of dialogue, invoking well-known imagery from sources like King Kong and Popeye. So, are you saying that all the times I got captured, it wasn't even about me? It was about my ring? Works for Frodo Baggins. Oh, never mind. Why would Nanny Netherwax give a little girl something that attracts danger? Your father loves you, Poppet, but he's too overprotective. You'll have some freedom one way or another, even if I have to kidnap you myself. Oh, I guess she had a point. Not every villain was after the ring. Do you remember the evil queen? And if you try to do anything for yourself, if you have a shred of ambition, you're branded evil. If you learn the word no, you're evil. If you get tired of working overtime to make men actively comfortable, you know what happens then? You get kidnapped? No, you get labeled evil. <gasps> oh, yes, she asked me a question. You want to be the final boss, right? Should I want to be the final boss? It's better than being Princess Dit's face. Do you have an answer? Well, she asked me if I wanted to be the final boss, but that would mean turning evil. The sparkle is made up of good and evil. Yes, Princess Sparkle Puppy still poops on the sparkle carpets. That was only one time. It was disgusting. Fellow Princess Sparkles, can we please focus on my flashbacks? Right, so what's your choice, Princess Sparkle Muffin? Will you break bad and become the final boss? Um... be the final boss. I want to be the playable character, a champion, a hero. Hooray! But I don't know how. You already saved the city from the mind control spores. What mind control spores? The ones you drank? That wasn't Sambuca? Wait, Serenity tried to mind control me? Actually, she tried to kill you. I'm totally unfollowing her on Instagram. Or maybe not. That could lead to drama. But I have to become a hero, which means I need a quest. Oh, <gasps> You could be my quest givers. You could save a princess. Seriously? You could save another hero. Ooh, that's exciting. Do heroes ever need rescuing? Help! I need saving. Well, that's convenient. Don't look a sparkle pony in the mouth. But I just did. This is getting sparkle silly. Time to wake up! Okay, time to be a playable character. Okay. Okay. Email. Playable character. Okay. Don't be a damsel. I can't help that. Don't be a Miss Male character. What does that even mean? Don't be background decoration. 
This isn't helpful at all. All it's telling me is what not to do. My parents can do that. I need guidance. New female heroes. Sitch. Let's meet your silk angels, shall we? Ooh, silk angels. That sounds promising. Meet Meluela, our dual-fisted pistols expert. Sensual, vivacious, and exotic. This Ecuadorian operative is adept at capoeira and enjoys sunbathing in the nude, but not alone. I don't get it. George is the mistress of the assault rifle. This savat champion may appear cold and distant, but she is only waiting for the right man to let her hair down. Ooh, like Rapunzel. Tomoe, say origato to the shotgun. This Japanese operative likes things up close and personal, whether it is blasting her enemy to pieces using Suzuki, her favorite shotgun, or cutting them to ribbons with her assorted blades, Tomoe prefers to keep things in close quarters. And to prove we're not an alt-right recruiting ground, you can select Judith, our grenadier, proficient in Krav Maga. Cold, calculating, and with a mean streak, this Israeli assassin might make you lose your head if you're not. Careful. <clears throat> Looks like the recent hires from Roguish Canine Studios have been using. Artistic license again. These images are subject to change. Significant change. And last, but certainly not least, our sniper. Annie. This American girl next door may play hard to get, but it is easy to see that she's only looking for the right kind of mark to enter her crosshairs. You are not the audience, Anne. You are not the audience. Just thinking about those headshots. It's the best way to win quick those headshots. One and none. What? The headshots, what does that sound? The headshots. I'll that make voice? Them. Those headshots, Is that? They're only one Show teams. away. Can all of you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. How did you get on this line? Oh no, I failed my stealth check. What? No! D d don't go! I... I love show tunes. Well, I think we found Anne Reardon's Achilles heel. This could prove useful. Where's the teleprompter? Ah. Now, many shameless sales presentations neglect to tell you what their games will cost. Well, since we're all men here, or wish we were, we're going to be totally straight and cisgendered with you. The game will sell at a starting price of $60 US. There will be a seasonal pass for the first six months that will elevate the price of the bundle to $100 of real US money. There will be a special edition that will be issued featuring statuettes of each of the five angels. The privilege to play online will also have a cost of $6.66 American weekly on our company's store. After the first six months, new DLC will be released almost monthly for the next six months, featuring six new teammates, Malpin, Catalina, Astrid, Lola, Grace, and Katie. The sad thing is, this isn't the worst game ever conceived. It's just very stuck in the mid-2000s, as are most people's opinions of who plays video games. Fortunately, despite the belief that the gamer identity is inherently white, polling of black and Hispanic gamers shows that they don't have huge issues with how characters of different races are portrayed. Asian American gamers, on the other hand, seem to strongly disagree. And it's true that Asian Americans tend to get left out of the discussions of representation, possibly because they're considered by so-called anti-racism advocates to be privileged minorities. Furthermore, the Asian American experience tends to get dwarfed in video games by the Asian Asian experience, and obviously this is not the same thing. 
Meanwhile, South Asians were stuck with Dalzim from Street Fighter as their only representation for years. It's getting a bit better now with characters like Parvati from The Outer Worlds and Symmetra from Overwatch, but still, South Asians are 25% of the world's population, and you wouldn't know that to look at most video games. The ongoing lack of true diversity in video game characters hinges on a two-pronged, major flawed assumption. The first prong is that the majority of people who play video games are WSCMs, and the other is that WSCMs don't want to play as anything but a WSCM, or occasionally a black or Hispanic guy in the military or in a gang. To clarify, that means that game companies believe that their players are a bunch of insecure, sexist, racists, and homophobes who can't handle fantasy that differs from their own real-life experiences. Which, yeah, if you read the games press, that seems to be exactly what gaming's brain trust thinks about people who play games. Again, the data just doesn't back that up. Horizon Zero Dawn has sold 10 million copies. The Tomb Raider reboot sold 11 million copies. The Last of Us 2, with two female playable characters and an Asian trans kid, had the best launch weekend of any PS4 title ever, selling 4 million copies in the first week. And Far Cry 5 more than doubled the sales of Far Cry 4. And Far Cry 5 was a game where the white American rednecks were the bad guys. So, either gamers aren't majority white guys, or they are majority white guys, but they'll still buy games where the main character isn't exactly like them. Either way, this fixation on an artificial constructed identity is bizarre. There will always be a name for gaming aficionados, and claiming that a love of video games is an inherently white, straight, cisgender, male, or any other thing is in direct opposition to the inclusion and diversity that is inherent to a medium where people can customize characters in virtual worlds. The gamer identity isn't anything but a person who loves video games, no matter who or what that person is. So, now that we've shown, fairly irrefutably, that the gamer identity isn't a monolith, it's not about power fantasy, it's not white, straight, cisgender, and male, let's check in with Social Justice Warrior. So, oh, not this And again. of course, no AAA game would be complete without surprise mechanics. We call them synthesized kinetic absorption nano weave knickers boxes. Triggered. Triggered. Sorry, social justice warrior. Triggered. I hit the wrong button. Triggered. Don't worry, SJW. I'm gonna rescue you for a change. You are? Yep, yeah, I'm doing agency. Here I go. Wish me luck. I'm tired of being captured just because that's my role. I've set off to become my own one-up. Hi everyone, I'm Princess Sparkle Muffin, and this is my female playable character song. You can sing along if you want. The words are <laughs> right there. We tracked this stream to this nice location so that I can rescue my friend. It hasn't gone off perfect, but I've assembled friends. And every time I fell, I got back up. Now I become playable. No more damsel in distress for me again. Now I'll be my own story's hero. Maybe this time I will Pod community character announced, Princess Sparkle Muffin! And I am here to provide support! This is so progressive, I've become another role. There's nothing wrong with needing help, you see. This all now seems quite perfect, hashtag feminist to me. Maybe this time she will rescue me. Is that now? Who are any of us, Anne? Only who we choose to be. 
Join on my grand adventure show that women can be heroes just like men. Secretly, I've longed to sing on Broadway. Maybe this time I'll help rescue him. Here, take my rescuing hat. Well, hello, any people that you've learned a lesson with. Screw this game, fell. You go. It's just a rip off game, fell. Tell us now. Promise I'll never show this crap. Ladies and gentlemen, and Reardon. I don't have him. He's being held at the secret nice lab. And where is that? It's a secret. Anne Burden, you have failed in your nice mission. You were defeated by a singing simpleton who needed her own backstory explained to her by a couple of furries. You are terminated. Terminate me? With what? Placeholder weapons we stole from other games because we put this demo together in two weeks? I quit! I don't even think the players think this story or characters are good. They play games for the gameplay! Oh snap! Truth bomb! Oh, <coughs> oh. oh poop emoji, she left with my rescuing hat. Oh, what'll it hurt to look? Oh. Oh. Oh, shiny. And look, SJW, and like your location in the box. I can rescue you now. Hooray! Once I re-coordinate my whole outfit with my new crown. I will listen and believe. And another nice boss bites the dust, rather musically this time, as does another myth about video games. If you like this series, consider supporting me on Patreon, or drop a one-time donation on PayPal to funetworktv at gmail.com, or you can buy Boss Fight merchandise at funetwork.tv. Next episode, we'll look at the myth games cause or encourage violence, sexism, and other dangerous or antisocial behaviors. Until then, remember that anyone can be a gamer. So, I'm Leanna Kersner. Don't hate the player, just play games.
have to do this once per month. Three times per month. You promise.